gonna take a second to pause. I started this video with a lapel mic and the darn thing died. So if we're missing a big chunk of audio, which I think we are, um, that's why. And I was like, mm, you know, how do I fix this? Um, there's no real great way to fix this. So I am not going to load back up my kiln just so that we can have a perfect YouTube video because this is real life and some things, some things just don't work out. So I will be doing a voiceover for the parts that we are missing audio to. I know it's not so pro, but we're, we're working on it. But I did not want to like cut out this first half of the kill mode because well, it's pretty amazing. So we'll just do a voiceover. Life happens. Moving on. All right. So it is as I suspected. I am missing the audio, which like I said, super frustrating, but we're doing what we're doing here. Okay. So this is the first kiln unloading for May. I have a ton of bisque that I have been glazing as I am finishing up the last of the wholesale order. Um, I have a bit more um, that I need to glaze, um, but I'm pretty much done throwing for this order. So we are going to take a look at what's in here. Um, and I think we have some good mugs and a few trial pieces in here as well. So let's get to opening. Okay, so first up is a mug with a knit pattern on the outside. So I threw this mug and then I used a roller that has a knit pattern on it to make an impression on the outside of the mug. And it's just subtly knit and I kind of love it. It'll be going to flock with me in August as well as these cacti mugs, which I love so much. Um, so these have the lagoon glaze over the uh, knit print and then they're on just a nice rounded shaped mug with speckles and then the lagoon on the inside as well. Um, so definitely loving these. And then this one is a combo that I found back in my feed a while back. Um, it has the uh, desert rose on the inside and the classic white on the outside. And this is fired to a cone six and you just get such pretty reactions out of uh, this glaze at this temperature. And the shape is just simplistic and it makes the inside kind of an unexpected pop when you just see this simplistic outside with this simplistic white glaze and then bam just beautiful glaze on the inside so i've got three of those and then i have a couple of mugs in here that ran they ran towards the handle so i um think i just glazed them a bit too thick there, but I can take my diamond sanding tool and grind those down. I don't have one that sits on the wheel head yet because um, they're really expensive, but I do have a smaller diamond sanding tool. So that does pretty good work for these smaller patches um, as long as it's not over the whole base. Okay, and here is the diamond tool that I was telling you about. Um, so yeah, it's just this little, I don't really know why they make it this shape, but yeah, little cylindrical kind of square shape. Um, so you can just take this and just grind it off and best done with a mask because you do get a lot of dust off of it. This is going to take a while as you can tell by hand because I mean I flattened that little bit while doing that so yeah it's it's a lot of work but it does save you muck so diamond tool okay it 
happened to this one too. Same glaze. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty good all around it. I think this one was obviously just like some extra glaze that came off around the handle. Um, and I think that's probably what happened to this one too. So I think I just need to be a little bit more careful not applying so much glaze around the handle um, because it looks like that's probably where it started to run off. So. Oh yeah. Okay. New glaze that I have been trying out and I really like it. I'm, I don't have a name for it yet. If you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's like this like dusty sandy color and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it kind of like gets a little bit more movement where it gets thicker and where the glaze gets thicker at the bottom. And it's, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so I have another one of the dusty colored glaze and then I did some blush pink and um, speckled birch on the inside. And this is just another one of those old combos that never gets old. <laughs> so yeah, did a couple of those, another dusty one. Let's keep digging it. Okay, so I'm getting a first look at the new, okay, so many new things on this one piece. First is new clay. This is a brown clay. Um, it has been a pain in the rear to throw with. Um, and I'm not sure if it's just a batch because it seems very wet. Um, so I'm going to have to play around with like probably putting it on some plaster before I throw it. Um, so new clay and then a new technique. I did some carving and then once it was fired in bisque, then I went behind and did wax resist in all the carved spots. And then I did, this is actually um, the golden hour glaze. As you can tell, this comes out a whole lot darker. So it's not as yellow as I was hoping for. Um, that brown clay really made a difference on that. But I also kind of just still like it. Like it's subtle and yeah. So maybe a few things to tweak, but overall I'm not mad about it. Bye Nolan. because it's a pain to get out of here. Love you. Have fun golfing. What? Get your little nose out of here. What are you doing in here? Okay, I have my first coffee pour over uh, vessel that I have made. I fired it on stilts because I wanted it to be fully glazed. Um, I did think about maybe just wiping the rim um, and firing it upside down, so that's something that I could still play around with, but um, let's see how this comes off. Oh, that came off pretty good. Um, so it has like these little like pinholes where the stilts are. I'll just use that same diamond tool to grind that down. And then it looks like I got a little baby crack, but it doesn't go all the way through and shouldn't affect it too bad too bad um, but yeah I put three small holes in here um, my brother-in-law is gonna be testing this out so I'll let him make some coffee and then get back to me as to whether the flow rate is good or not because I've never personally used a coffee pour over so I don't know how this is gonna go but so far I like it okay we've got some more brown clay creations in here these are two platters. This is again that golden hour glaze. As you can see, it definitely came out more brown. So um, you get a little bit of that dusty yellow in some places, like the crack um, between the lip and the base, but um, definitely more brown. I'm not sure that I really love that because I want it to be like a little bit more contrasting to the clay itself. Um, but again, not mad about it. Um, and then this is the Lagoon Glaze, which this one seems to, to hold up pretty good against the uh, brown clay. So, again, something to play around with. Alright, more platters. 
again in the lagoon and I'm, I'm liking that. So golden hour and then we have a square one in lagoon and these were my like first attempt at building um, like hand building platters because um, I don't normally do that. I do pretty much everything on the wheel um, except for an occasional mug. So um, yeah, I like it though. What's that? Is that a lady asking me if this was a garage sale? No, it's just my garage. <laughs> oh. Okay, but anyhow, here you can kind of see the platter set that I was aiming for, so I like it. We've got a couple of little flared mini bowls in the golden hour. Um, loving the shape and color combo and I'll grab one of the so <laughs> to show you like how big of a difference the clay makes on the glazes this is golden hour and this is golden hour so big big difference so it will take a lot of playing around to figure out what glazes um, hold up over this brown clay in the way that I want, um, but big diff. Ta-da! Okay, we've got lots of planters. Ooh, look at that. I'm pretty impressed with the fact that I do not measure my planters when I'm throwing them, because I don't mind if there's like a little bit of a difference between them each, um, because they're gonna be most likely sold individually. Um, it's mostly like, bowl sets or things that stack inside of each other that I'm more picky about but even just eyeballing it like that's not too shabby yeah 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 okay so lots of planters I'm gonna get these unloaded so we'll kind of zoom past this a little bit So just a couple things that weren't planters in those bottom layers were the flared bowls in Lagoon and then one last uh, tray to finish out a set. So that is it for this kiln mode. Um, I'm going to count these up real quick and then let you guys know how many I have. So hold on one second. Okay, that was 68 pots in total in this kiln which again is a good amount. Uh, this kiln ho holds so much. It's a 10 cubic foot kiln. So big boy kiln, um, lots of pots, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments um, what kind of videos you want to be watching here on the channel. And of course, pretty please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks guys. Bye.